Hi, this is Swan from Swan Amity Studios. Today we are going to be looking at making kanzashi flowers using the Clover Kanzashi Maker templates. Now I really like these because prior to these I was making kanzashis uh, using a couple of online tutorials that just start with a square of fabric and then you shape it and uh, finger press in order to get a different type of flower shape and depending on how you cut it and how you fold it you get different shapes. Now the great thing about these is that the makers come with very simple to follow uh, templates. This is their orchid petal template and what I like about this one and most of them is that um, they're super easy to get a lot of different little varieties out of them. This one is the large orchid petal. This one is the small orchid petal. The great thing about these is that they are so easy to follow. They tell you where to start. They tell you where to finish. And you can get different types of folds in the large, in the small. You can see you can get them puffy. You can get them a little inside out so you have kind of a cupped deep petal. Let's take a look at how to make that work. Starting, all you have to have is a piece of fabric, a scrap or a square that is bigger than the kanzashi maker itself. Really easy to do. Now it doesn't have to be a square, it just needs to be larger than the maker. You're going to take that and fold it in half check to make sure that you don't have any folds inside the kanzashi maker and you have a little tab up here at the top and you want to push on that so that it holds the fabric in place. Now you could set it down and walk away if you wanted to. Um, got interrupted. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and trim away the excess fabric. Now I like to leave about an eighth of an inch of fabric although the instructions on the maker tell you that you can leave no fabric all the way around and that's also fine. So if you don't have enough room to leave a little bit of seam allowance, don't worry about it. You don't actually need it. Now when we're going to follow the directions, we're going to start where it says start and the one, which is where you're beginning, lines up on both sides. So we're going to then go into two and if you were at all confused, you would come out and you would see we're at two on the other side too. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, eight. And once we're through on eight, we're ready to remove the little template. So then you're just going to pop the template loose, just like that and pull your little half circle out, ready to go. Now you're going to pull tight, creating that little ruffly shape. And I usually take a moment before it's all the way tight and just to kind of straighten out all the little sections so that it's nice and straight and flat on the base there. Now that we're all the way through, we're going to have to shape our petal because here's what it looks like when we're done. And that doesn't really look like the picture, does it? So from both sides. Now that's pretty and I can absolutely make seven or eight of those and they look wonderful. But I kind of want to see what different shapes I can get. So let's take a look at some different examples. Set that one aside for a moment. Now say that I want to make my petals look like this. So they have a nice little puff and an interior indent. Those look nice. Or I might want to see them from this side and have a little bit more dimension lifting up off of my piece. Now those are really easy to do. Notice we just need to make a couple of little folds and then we need to press down in the center. Okay, let's see what we did to do that. Here's what it looked like when it came out. There was that kind of elongated shape that we saw. We're going to fold down the two outside edges. So we're going to start just by folding down on both sides that little 
tab on the side because it's kind of long. We're just going to straighten out our petals on the bottom. So now that we're folded over on the sides, we're going to stitch through, hold those little flaps into place. The last thing that we want to do is take our needle and push down on that center piece, just like that. Kind of trap it in the center there, a little pinch. And when you've got that little fold trapped in the center, then you're just going to stitch through that fold, just like that. And that's all we did to make that petal. We'll just puff that out a little bit on the side look like the other petals. Now, we'll go ahead and tie a little knot there, and then that one would also be ready. Now you're stitching through a lot of layers of fabric with the kanzashis because you folded them up and then you need to kind of nail a few things into place to make some different petal shapes. So you may wish to wear your thimble in this case. I am also using a John James Golden Glide applique needle, um, size 11. 10 would also work really well. I like these needles because they're designed to go through many layers of fabric really smoothly. And they're a little longer than a quilting needle or an average stitching needle for applique, so they feel a little bit more comfortable going through all of those layers. Now let's look at a small one because if we had made a small one, we might want to make one that had that kind of that little fold from the photograph. See how that makes the petal look more like the one we saw on the original packaging? There's our little petal. There's our little petal that looks a lot more like that. Now when they first come out, they don't look like that, of course. They look like this. There it is, fresh out of the maker. Doesn't look as exciting as that pretty one we just saw. So how do we make it look like that? Most of the ways that I always start is to fold down those two outside edges. Fold that over on that side. Pull that tight and fold it over on the other side. And kind of pull them so they all line up at the base. Now what we get from that there's a little bit less bulk at the top where eventually we're going to want to send a little button through. So starting to look like what we want it to look like. I'm also going to push down on that guy again and make a little indent in that center one and again take a little less bulk out of the overall petal like that. Now we're done. We are ready. All we need to do now is make a little fold at the top. So we're just going to kind of roll the top edge over. Stick your fingernail in there and kind of make that roll over, just like that. Now it looks nice and rounded from the top. That little fold also kind of helps the petal to look a little bit more um, pushed out at the side. It gives it a little bit more structure. And then it also looks really nice from both sides. Okay, so that's an easy way to get that to work. Now you can also take those big bumps that you started with. You can put an indent in each one of the three and fold over those base flaps again. And you get something that looks like that from the indent, like that from the top. You don't have to make an indent in the top piece. You can let that sit up a little bit higher, like that, and just make the fold. And then whether you use it from this side or from this side, it's still very pretty. When I open them and I plan to use them cupped, I often don't worry about indenting this top one here. We didn't do it there because when I put a button through the center, I'm going to use that to squish the center just a little bit. So when you go ahead and stitch all five of your petals together and shape your flower, you'll end up having one 
that looks like that or like that. And then you decide which side you like it best from. Top side or bottom side, doesn't matter. Whichever one makes you happy. You're going to take a button then. Uh, you can use a sew through button, you can use a covered button. I tend to choose one with a nice metal shank so that I can stitch through that metal shank from the back side of my quilt and pull tight. And then I'm going to have nice little kanzashis in my project. Check out our new pattern, Love Doves, from Swan Amity Studios. It uses kanzashis. We are using the Orchid Large and Small Petal Makers from Clover. We think you'll really like them. They are so much fun on Love Doves, we know you'll find other projects to use them on too. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check back for more information and more easy ways to do some fun projects here with Swan at the studio.